Well, hey, everybody, welcome to Crossroads. We're so glad you're here. Those of you that are here in the auditorium with us, always so good to connect with you. And thanks to all of you that are joining us online. We love worshiping with you. And uh, it's just great to have you here today. Um, I, uh, I gotta be honest with you, I was, I was last night, I was this close to changing my sermon. I, I'm kicking off a new series of messages today called Strings, but last night I was this close to changing uh, my sermon to an outline that I, I've been working on. It's called, Can I Hate Nick Saban and Still Go to Heaven? But I, I decided that... I'd go ahead and do this new message. I don't know, but some of y'all were last night going, not today, Satan. I mean, Saban, not today. What a game, huh? What an incredible win and what a gutsy call. And, and uh, Coach Kelly is now officially the head coach of LSU. You gotta beat Alabama before you're officially the head coach of, L- of LSU. And, but uh, man, I, I had a hard time getting to sleep last night. It was just heart pounding, you know, it's exciting, it's exciting. Today, I want to kick off a a new message series for the month of November. Strings are part of our life every day. And there's so much a part of our life every day that they kind of make their way into conversations as like a means of comparison or uh, as a means of metaphor. So we talk about times that we felt like we're just hanging by a string. Come on, anybody ever use that kind of language, right? Um, we, we tie strings around our finger to remember things. And, um, and, then, and then, of course, um, we talk about loose ends. Those moments in our lives when things haven't really been kind of tied up and the ends are left loose, we talk about all those things. There's even in the scientific community now, there's a thing called string theory. I heard a comedian recently say he was watching a documentary on television about the scientific discovery of string theory. He said it started at eight o'clock and at 8.02 his brain exploded <laughs> because it's just, it's just crazy. The whole string theory, uh, it, scientific string theory is just crazy. Um, They say uh, string theory is all the stuff Einstein was unaware of. And this comedian said, okay, if Einstein didn't get it, me sitting here on the couch with a bag of potato chips, I'm probably not going to get it either, right? It's fascinating. Today, I'm not going to talk to you about string theory. I'm going to talk to you about string theology. I want to address this whole issue of loose ends. Um, In Isaiah chapter 33 and verse 22, God addresses the loose ends in our life through the prophet. Uh, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22, Isaiah speaks by inspiration of the Holy Spirit and he said, your ropes are slack. What's he saying? You got some loose ends. Your ropes are slack. They cannot secure the mast or spread the sail. Then an abundance of spoils will be divided and even the lame will carry off plunder. Now we know that Jesus warned us in John chapter 10 that that there's a thief that comes to steal, to kill and to destroy on spiritual terms. And even over into kind of our natural existence, we have a very real enemy in Satan that wants to steal from us. He wants to kill and to destroy. And what God says to us through the prophet Isaiah here is that often he's successful in robbing us simply because of the loose ends, because we don't have things tied up like we should. Because of those loose ends, the enemy is able to make off with our abundance. He's able to make off with those things that he has every intention of robbing from me and robbing from you. The term loose ends would be defined like this. Uh, Loose ends are just unfinished business. Things that you haven't really tied down. You know, you may have started uh, working on those things, but maybe because of procrastination, uh, maybe just because of the don't wants. Anybody ever get the don't wants? You've left some loose ends, but it puts you spiritually on really vulnerable, vulnerable ground. 
And God warns us about all of this unfinished business. Here's what I wanna, here's what I wanna say to you today as we kick this series of, of messages off. I wanna say that there are some real loose ends in Christendom today, in Christianity today. There's some real loose ends. And we could address any of them. We could address all of them. Uh, uh, I wanna address one in particular uh, but just to, just so we're on the same page and, and you know the kind of loose ends that I'm referring to, I would say world evangelism is certainly one of those loose ends. It's one of those things that we have as believers, as followers of Jesus, we've been absolutely called to do, go into all the world, preach the gospel. That's not Jeff's responsibility alone. That's every one of our responsibility. And yet so many of us as believers, as people who profess to be believers in Jesus, followers of Jesus, we never give any mind whatsoever to sharing our faith with someone. We never, ever, ever even think twice about uh, sharing the gospel with our neighbors, our coworkers, people we interact with on a daily basis. And, and we've never shared the gospel, even though that's exactly why we're here. It's, why, it's what God has given us as believers to do. And yet it's, it's one of those loose ends. One of those things we leave undone. I'm waiting on you. This whole idea of uh, taking care of the least of these is a real loose end in Christianity today. We leave that undone. We see people all around us that are in desperate need. They need comfort, they need encouragement, they need provision, uh, they need help, and yet we leave that loose end in place, thinking, well, somebody will come along and take care of it, when all along, Jesus said, that's me me and your responsibility. Every one of us, it's our responsibility. And and we've got to address these loose ends in Christendom today. We've got to address these loose ends in our own Christianity today. Can I get an amen? We need to address those. There are some real loose ends in Christianity. You know, uh, Paul in, in the book of Ephesians describes the whole armor of God. He tells us about a helmet of salvation God's given us to wear, a, a breastplate of righteousness, a shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. He talks about the belt of truth. And then he, he mentions these shoes He said that our feet are to be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And here's what I'm afraid of in Christianity today. I'm afraid that our feet may be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, but it seems like our shoes are untied. We've got some loose ends. I wanna read from Matthew's gospel, Matthew chapter 21, and I wanna start reading at verse 28. Matthew 21, 28, Jesus says, um, what do you think about this? A man with two sons told the older boy, son, go out and work in the vineyard today. And the son answered, no, I won't go. But later he changed his mind and he went anyway. And then the father told the other son, you go. And he said, yes, sir, I will. But he didn't go. And then Jesus poses this question. Which of the two obeyed his father? Obviously we know it's that older son that ultimately obeyed his father. But Jesus presents a consideration for every one of us here today that we would do well to take heed of. And that is, we are judged by completion, not intention. We're judged by completion, finishing the task. Getting that loose end tied down is what we're gonna be judged by. Every one of us have, I'm sure, the best of intentions. We intend to get it done, and yet we never get around to it. And God wants us to know today, when we stand before him and we give an answer to him for our life, and how many know, every one of us are going to. Stand before God and give an answer for our life. We're not gonna be judged in that setting on our intention. We're gonna be judged on the completion we've carried out of all those things that God has given us to do. Now, I wanna take real quickly, and I wanna just give you kind of a little sidebar uh, uh, observation. Uh, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time with, but I feel responsible to share this with you. Uh, and then I'll get to what I really came to talk to you about today. But, but we, uh, we're a very diverse church family. And by that, 
I don't only mean racially diverse, but um, you know, gender, there's uh, a lot of uh, diversity, men and women. And then age uh, wise, we are a, a, a very, uh, very diverse family. We have a lot of young folks. We've got some middle-aged folks. And, uh, and then we've got some folks that are getting on into the twilight years of their life. And that's who I wanna address for just a second because I'm entering into your territory now. And uh, some of you have been there a while. And you'll know this, uh, many of us in the middle age season of our life have to deal with those in the twilight zone years of their life who have left some loose ends. And, 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 and I'm, I'm fresh off of this, and so I wanna say to you, I'm your pastor and I love you, and it's my job to, to give you some direction. And I wanna say, if you're in that twilight season of your life, I know you don't wanna think about the fact that you're not always gonna be here. I know that. We wanna think we're invincible and we're gonna live forever, but it's appointed unto every man wants to die. Listen, if Jesus tarries, we're all gonna go by way of the grave. And we need to have our loose ends tied up. And if, if you don't have some type of legal document that says what you expect to be done with your assets, can I tell you, get that done? Can I say to you, don't leave that loose end in place uh, as it relates to what you want out of your celebration of life that we're gonna hold for you one day. Get that on paper. Talk to your children about it. Listen, when those in that season of their life leave those loose ends in place. It becomes a great burden for those coming behind them. And you don't wanna do that to your children. You don't wanna do that to your family. This is a sideboard issue. I'm not gonna go any further than I've gone, but I appeal to you because I love you and I love your family. Get those loose ends taken care of, amen? Get those loose ends taken care of. Now, this is what I really wanted to say. Of all the loose ends in Christianity, yes, world evangelism, so important, yes, meeting the needs of the least of these, so important. But of all the loose ends in Christianity, perhaps the most significant is real connection in Christian community. It is one of the greatest loose ends in Christendom today. Now, let me just say, it was already that way pre-pandemic, but since COVID, it's insane. How many of us have this as a loose end issue in our lives? We are not connected we're not connected. Our interaction and fellowship with our spiritual family that God has called us to be a part of is so spotty. It's so hit and miss. It is a loose end just waving in the winds that are blowing today. And I'm telling you, Isaiah gives us a stark warning that if we leave these loose ends like they are, the enemy's gonna be able to rob us. He's gonna be able to plunder and rob us. And so this is a loose end that we've gotta get tied down. Our approach towards our connection to our spiritual family. And I wanna make sure you understand what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the church just universally. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking a specific expression of the body of Christ within the local church setting that God leads you to connect to and they become your family. That is a loose end. We are treating it flippantly. We're treating it just like a lost world did when COVID hit. We, we're treating our connection to the body of Christ as hit or miss, take it or leave it. It doesn't really matter when it absolutely matters. And I wanna say to you, I intended to say it later in, this, in the outline, but let me just say it now. There are things coming, things on the horizon in this fallen world, you will not survive in isolation. You better get connected to a body of believers, a family of believers that are gonna help you to stand when the rest of the world is bowing. I'm telling you, we need one another. Listen, the Bible's instruction is not that we just go to church, but that we be a part of a church is what God has instructed us to do. We have this insane idea that I can show up at this church Sunday and next Sunday maybe at the church across town and, and then the next Sunday maybe I'll just stay home and watch Furtick on TV and, and we feel like that's a connection to the body of Christ. You are deceived. You're absolutely deceived. God's not interested in you just attending a church to hear a sermon by a 
pastor, but God wants you connected to a family of believers where there's real community, real Christian connection with people that know you. They know your struggle. You know them, and you're there for one another. I, I, Don and I are building a house right now, and uh, one of the things that we included was a fireplace. I love a fireplace. I grew up in a home with a fireplace, so we, we, we put a fireplace in this, uh, in this plan that we had drawn up. I could have saved that expense, and I could have just turned on the fireplace app have you seen this nonsense? Some of you do that. You do that. You don't have a fireplace. So you turn it on your TV and it makes a little popping noise and you go, ooh, is it this nice? No, it's dumb. <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of in my life. You can't go up there and warm your hands to that image on your screen? How many know there's a difference between what looks like a fireplace and what is a fireplace? And there's a difference between what looks like a connection to the body of Christ and what is a real... I'm feeling this today. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 said, all of you together are Christ's body and each of you is a part of it. You're a part of it. This isn't an observation. This is a participation situation we have here. You're part of it. So let's talk about how to tie up this, la this loose end. How do we tie up the loose end of no real connection to Christian community? Number one, through consistent attendance. Where you show up, you're there. Think with a body of believers that you are developing relationship with and you do that consistently, it's not hit and miss, look at me. I know there are times when you're gonna take your family on vacation and it's absolutely fitting for you to do that. I encourage you to do that. But, but listen, that's the exception, not the rule. The rule needs to be, it's Sunday morning, we're gonna be in church. We're gonna be connected to our spiritual family. We're gonna be interacting with fellow believers that are there for us and we're there for them. Hebrews 10, 25 said, let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do. <laughs> but encourage one another, especially now that the day of Christ's return is drawing near. When this was written, the book of Acts gives us insight to how often they were meeting together. Weekly, they were meeting together in the temple courts and daily, they were meeting together in homes. And the Holy Spirit inspires someone to write instruction for us at a time where they're meeting collectively, weekly in a big setting and daily in a small setting. And, and, he, and he's inspired to say, now do this even more as we see the end approaching. Well, if you don't see the end approaching, you got your head in a hole in the ground. And you better wake up and understand, I'm gonna say one more time, there are things on the horizon, things that are coming soon that you will not survive in isolation. And we need one another. We need to connect. You tie up that loose end through consistent attendance. Number two, through consistent support. Where you embrace fully the mission of that local expression of the body of Christ and you give yourself to it. You give your resources to it. You support it. You're behind it. You're helping make it happen. That's how you're gonna tie up those loose ends. Let me say this. The principle of the tithe, and you understand what that is, the Bible tells us the first 10% of everything that comes in to us in the form of income belongs to God. And we're to bring it to his house to take care of his business. This is some of that unfinished business, those loose ends that we need to get responsible for. But here's what I want you to understand about the tithe. The principle of the tithe was put in place to ensure ministry is in place and so are we. The tithe makes sure that ministry is in place and so are we. Maybe you're saying, Jeff, how, how does my tithing ensure that I'm in place? I'm glad you asked that question. I was hoping someone would. Here's why. Because Matthew 6, 21, Jesus said this, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. When you've invested in the mission of the local church, 
when, when you've got investment there, your heart's gonna be there. Good times and bad times. You're gonna be there, you're gonna cheer everyone on in the moments of triumph. You're gonna hold each other tight in the moments of struggle because your heart is there through your investment. So if you're gonna tie up these loose ends, this loose end of, of no real Christian connection within community, you've got to attend consistently, you've gotta support consistently, and thirdly, you've gotta serve consistently. Because the way we support our church isn't just with our dollars. That's a good starting point, but it's, that, that's not where it ends. We lend our abilities, our skill sets, our passions. We lend all of that to the cause of the local church. We lend that to the mission of the family, the spiritual family God has connected us with. Ephesians chapter four, verse 12 through verse 16 are the words of St. Paul as he's inspired by the Holy Spirit to write uh, their responsibility, speaking of pastors and teachers and the like, their responsibility is to equip God's people to do God's work and to build up the church, the body of Christ. So do you see here, my responsibility is to equip you to do God's work and to build up the church. That's what the word of God is declaring. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of the Son of God that we'll be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be mature, uh, immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who's the head of uh, his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. As each part, that's you, does its own special work, he makes the whole body fit together perfectly so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. You hear what the Bible's saying? The, the, the church is not gonna be healthy. It's not gonna be growing. It's not gonna be full of love until we're all contributing, until we're all connected to a local spiritual family. Listen, when Toby Mack comes to the Cajun Dome and every expression of the body of Christ in Acadiana all comes together there for a concert setting. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. I love those moments. But then daily, there is a select spiritual family God's made you a part of. Action is. That's where you're going to grow. That's where you're going to grow by contributing, by serving. It's going to help you to tie up that Loose in, and let me make this observation. Serving ensures that the church's mission is fulfilled, and so are we. Not only is the church's mission fulfilled, you'll get fulfilled as you begin to serve in the spiritual family God's made you a part of. And I'll say this, there is a level of fulfillment you'll never know any other way. You can have the greatest success in business, and I hope you do, I pray daily that you do but it won't bring you the fulfillment you're going to know when you get connected, when you tie up that loose end and you begin to serve with your unique skill sets, passions, gifts, you begin to serve the mission of the local church. There's such great fulfillment that comes from that. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 said, we're God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Can I stop and ask you to consider with me? I wonder what works that God actually had in mind for you to do before you were ever created that is right now just a loose end blowing in the wind, leaving you unfulfilled. Number four. How, how do we tie up this loose end of connected Christian community? Through submission. That's right, I said it. It's like a cuss word today. In a fallen world, you present the idea of submission and people are like, but I'm telling you, the Bible is filled with admonition for us to submit to one another. 
And submission is gonna help you tie up these loose ends. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, obey your leaders and submit to them for they keep watch over your souls and will give an account for their work. Let them do this with joy, not with complaint for this would be of no advantage to you. There is a great advantage in submission to spiritual leadership. I have known that advantage well. I've known it all my life. Uh, one of the, the leaders in my life that you're aware of is our, our apostolic leader here as a church, Pastor Denny Duran. I cannot tell you how many times that loving spiritual father has taken me behind the woodshed and wore me out on spiritual terms as he saw things in my life that weren't right, as he saw things in my life that needed to be addressed. He was faithful and loving enough to wound me and get me started down the right path again and again and again. And we all need those leaders in our life. It's a great advantage to us to be submitted to spiritual leadership. It's a a, a loose end you need to tie up. What, What is that advantage? Accountability? You're answering to someone? Encouragement, we all need it. Correction, counsel, guidance. I could go on and on and on. This is a loose end. You better get tied up. And lastly, number five, if we're gonna tie this, tie down this, this loose end of consistent, connected Christian community, we're gonna do it through discipleship where you have someone in your life discipling you, and then you have people in your life that you're discipling. That's the will of God for every believer. And if, if that's not a true picture of what's happening in your life right now, look at me, you gotta tie up that loose end. You've gotta get someone in your life, speaking regularly into your life, helping to disciple you, and then you've gotta, you've gotta do the same for those that need to be discipled that you could help. Hebrews 5 verse 12 says, you've been believers so long now, you ought to be teaching others. Stop for just a moment and ask yourself, who am I teaching? Who am I discipling? Who am I taking all that's been poured into me and and I'm now pouring it into them? And if there's no one there, you're not doing what you ought to. (laughs) The Bible said you ought to be doing this. You ought to be doing this. It's your responsibility. It's a loose end. You need to get tied down. He says, instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's word. You're like babies. You're immature. Can I just say this? We can't disciple someone we're not around. We can't disciple someone we don't know. And and we can't disciple someone we have no connection with. That's why we can't leave this loose end untied. Everybody needs a Paul in their life, a spiritual father. Everybody needs a Barnabas in their life, a spiritual brother. And everyone needs a Timothy in their life, a spiritual son. We, 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 we need to tie up that loose end, church. I've got I've to I've wrap this up. I'm not out of sermon, but I'm out of time. I wanna make this last observation with you because right now the Holy Spirit is speaking to so many of you about loose ends about this loose end in particularly. Here's what I want you to recognize. Loose threads are the easiest to pull out of the fabric. Ezekiel showed up to our house Thursday. We do family night on Thursday night and Zeke spends the night with us and then we've got him all day on Friday. Friday's my day off. And so he shows up Thursday for family night carrying, he, he loves little stuffed animals, you know, three and a half years old and and uh, he shows up Thursday night with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and Frosty the Snowman. He has officially skipped Thanksgiving. <laughs> and he's gone, he's gone straight to Christmas and he walked into our apartment and, and he says, happy Christmas, Poppy. <laughs> happy Christmas, lovey. And he had on these cute little Christmas socks. In those socks and the next morning I'm getting him dressed and there's a little loose thread at the top of that sock. And he reached down and he grabbed it. And I said, oh, don't, 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 don't do that. He doesn't always obey Poppy. And he pulled that string right out of that sock. And I had this message prepared to share with you, but I didn't have this last observation until Ezekiel reminded me, loose threads are the easiest to pull out of the fabric. 
And if this Christian community, connection to Christian community is a loose end in your life, it's gonna be so easy for your enemy to pull your loose thread right out of the fabric. Ecclesiastes chapter four, verse nine through verse 12 said, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them fall down, one can help the other up, but pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm, but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves and a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Jesus warned that in these last days, and I'm gonna say one more time, there's some hard days coming, y'all. And Jesus said that in these last days, many would lose out with God. He, he said it this way. He said in Matthew 24, verse 12, sin will be rampant everywhere. Do you see it? Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. And I see it happening. I see it happening. I see so many people that have lost their first love. They've lost their commitment to Jesus. They've lost their commitment to the spiritual family that he's called them to. And it's a loose end that we've got to get tied down. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to take just a moment and give you an invitation to accept Jesus Christ into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior. If you've never done that and you have no assurance in your heart that you're right with God, ready to meet God in eternity, I want you to consider a couple of things. The Bible tells us that all of us have sinned. All of us have come short of the glory of God. You know, it's the one thing we all have in common. We're all sinners. We all need a Savior. The scripture says that the price of our sin is separation from God. Now, God doesn't want us separated from Him. He wants to connect with us. It meant so much to Him that He sent His own Son, Jesus, to come to this earth and to die on the cross for our sins. He rose again, and now the Bible says if we place our faith in Christ, we can be forgiven. We can be made right with God, and we can have a brand new life here and now and an eternal life when this life is over. Again, if you have no assurance of that, you can. You simply need to place your faith in Jesus Christ. The scripture says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So God loves you and he's ready to save you. He's just waiting on you to call on him. Why don't we do that right now? Let's call on God together by praying a very simple prayer. Repeat the words of this prayer after me. Let those words come right from your heart. Let's pray. Dear God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I know my sin separates me from you and I don't want that. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he died for me and rose again. And through faith in Jesus, I believe my life can change. So I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart, forgive all my sin and change my life. Be Lord of my life. From this day forward, I don't live for me anymore or the world anymore. God, I want to live for you. Help me to do that. And God, I thank you right now, even as I pray, according to your promise, my sins are forgiven. I'm now right with God. I am saved. Thank you, God, for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, if you just prayed that prayer with us, we want to know about it. We want to celebrate with you. Uh, all you'll need to do is just text the word SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to the number that's on your screen. Or uh, just go to the description below and you'll see a link that you can click there. And someone will connect with you and give you some next steps in your brand new faith in Jesus Christ. We're so excited that you've accepted Christ as your Savior and your Lord today. Congratulations, and God bless you.